Hi and welcome back to Hey, Have You Read This Book? The title of today's book is Keeping Hope Alive, written by Dr. Hawa Abdi. This true story is about the life of an extraordinary woman who saved the lives of thousands of people. When Hawa bought her farm, she had no idea that one day she would let 90,000 Somalis find refuge on her 1,300-acre land. Hawa grew up on a farm in La Foley, which is not far from Mogadishu. After her mother's death, she had to help on the farm and care for her father, grandmother and sisters. After leaving school, she was accepted to go to medical school in Ukraine. In 1971, when she was 24 years old, she returned to Mogadishu to begin her career as a doctor. She was one of only 60 doctors in Somalia. She had met Aidan when they were both Somali students in the Soviet Union, and when they returned to Somalia, they got married. While most Somalis were flocking to Mogadishu in search of work, Hawa decided to buy some land in La Foley where she grew up. So every day after working at the hospital, she would drive to the farm to carry out some improvements there. Some workers were hired and they had a house built. Finally, in 1983, Hawa, Aidan and their two daughters moved to their farm in La Foley, where Hawa gave birth to her son. On their farm, they had cows and hundreds of chickens. They also planted thousands of fruit trees. Some people who lived in the rural areas in need of medical attention came to see Hawa on her farm instead of going to Mogadishu to see a doctor. So Hawa decided to build a clinic on her farm. Soon Hawa was seeing 100 patients a day at the clinic, which grew to become a hospital with an operating room. In 1988, the government dropped bombs on Hargeisa to kill a rebel group. As many as 5,000 people died. Other clans also became targets. People fleeing the violence went to Hawa's farm. So many people went that soon there was no room inside. They had to sleep under the trees. In 1991, Siad Barre's state house was invaded and he and his men were forced out onto the street. Fighting escalated as the sound of machine gun fire continued day after day. Soon there were over 4,000 people on Hawa's farm. As the world heard of Somalia's disaster, International aid sent food, medical supplies and temporary shelters to Somalia. But sometimes food was captured by warlords who sold the food and used the money to buy more weapons. A militant group stormed onto Hawa's farm to try to throw her out. As the fighting continued to get worse, many people fled Somalia to neighbouring countries. Clan hatred even caused people at Hawa's camp to fight. But Hawa made a rule. If anyone talked about clans, they could not stay. Despite Hawa's struggles with problems of her own, such as the breakdown of her marriage, the death of her son, the irresponsible behaviour of her sisters and her own sickness, she was determined not to let down all the sick, the injured and people who came to her to escape the violence. It is a tragedy that in Somalia so many people were fighting each other just because they were from different clans. Hawa hated that so many people thought that their clan was so important. She knew that this attitude was never going to bring peace. President Siad Bahre's clan, the Darud, persecuted other clans. Hawa spent some time in the government hoping to bring change to the country, but she could not change the attitude of the others in the government. So she left to go back to work in her clinic where she persevered with the help of her two daughters, giving hope to thousands of people who were ill, wounded or displaced. I recommend that you read this inspiring true story about a courageous woman struggling to bring change to the destructive ways of her country's people. Thanks for watching.